Okay. Um, I meant to start a little earlier to, because we talk, we do a little advertisement about uh, the next four lessons. <clears throat> Hello, um, this is Henry. Um, I'm glad that uh, um, this is the 50th lesson, uh, which will end the four uh, or fifth series. I, I forgot. Uh, I think it must be fifth because uh, every 10 lessons a series. And um, because there are uh, so many masters uh, on our list, uh, we want to uh, finish. Um, I, I'm very uh, appreciative that you, uh, you guys uh, liked the uh, extra lessons we, we got from Master uh, Yang Yuanwei, a living uh, Chinese master uh, in our previous uh, weeks. Um, and uh, I, I wish uh, his uh, health uh, getting uh, better because uh, today he was supposed to be here to give us uh, advice on this uh, master that he knows in person and also a good friend of his son, Song Yuming. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, he, he suffered, he's suffering from uh, back, lower back pain today. So I, I, my best uh, wish to him to recover soon. Uh, meanwhile, we would like to express our sincere uh, thanks to Mr. Yang for his time and uh, uh, dedication to, to our class. Uh, I do and received another uh, uh, handout I meant to pass you yesterday. Uh, he, he um, let me share with you, I think uh, we still have one minute, right? Um, a handout, uh, he tried to uh, show us the uh, uh, the smaller painting, more economically, uh, how to uh, cut the paper in, in you know, for, for our needs, because he realized that most of us are not using the large size painting uh, paper. So he, he designed this more, more uh, efficient way to, to uh, to cut the paper like this, uh, you can see. So you can cut a, a large four sheet of uh, rice paper. I'm going to pass to this to you. Just explain this a little bit. We have uh, 30 seconds. Okay. Um, so you can cut two pieces for uh, painting core or drawing core, uh, and then one piece for the um, backing and the plus all the strips you need. Uh, this corner you could still use for practicing. So that's about the size we normally use. I think it's uh, a little larger than one sixth of the, um, the, the whole sheets that we normally use. But this is more uh, tailored to the IKEA smaller uh, frame, which cost only $15.99. Oh, no, no, $14.99, less than $15, uh, $15 if you would like. So, um, I will pass this to you later, okay? Thank you, uh, Mr. Yang, again, for his uh, contribution to our class. Um, also, I have uh, uh, received many advice from him, including uh, today's lesson. Uh, so we'll, we'll go through that. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, even with his absence, I'm still um, appreciative, uh, you know, with his uh, tips on how to, how to do Song, Song Wenzhi's uh, landscape painting. Um, okay, Song Wenzhi is also um, um, uh, my men mentor. I, I will say uh, not uh, per very personally, but uh, I met him twice in my life, uh, my art artist uh, career. Uh, one is in high school when I, when I, uh, working on the uh, landscape painting of uh, the Yangtze River Bridge. Uh, I, I used his uh, painting uh, as a reference and uh, I also showed my, my interpretation, my version 
and he showed me how to do the uh, plum blossom spring uh, hills. Um, so that that was my first um, lesson from him. And then later, when he was uh, uh, associated with uh, Nanjing University uh, as a guest professor, I um, had several occasions to show him. My family also um, witnessed his uh, demos. He's uh, a well-known uh, master. Um, according to some um, critiques, so art, art historian, he's among the top eight. Um, of Chinese landscape uh, painters in the 20th century. Uh, and he, one of the uh, four masters uh, of Niu, Niu uh, Jingning or Nanjing, Nanjing School of uh, Landscape uh, Painting founded by Fu Baoshi. So after Fu Baoshi, there are four masters. Uh, uh, we, we already talked about, uh, we already talked about uh, um, three of them. One is uh, Ya Ming, uh, another is uh, uh, Qian Song Yan, and uh, I taught a lesson um, on with several lessons. One uh, on Song Wen, uh, not Song Wei Zi Xi. Uh, let me write this. I, I think uh, I better type in the chat. It's easier. Or um, you can review those lessons. Ya Ming. Qian Song Yan, you know, the mountain, the cliff with the pine, uh, and uh, uh, Wei Zixi, the red foliage um, landscape from uh, his uh, son, Wei Li, and uh, a waterfall painting uh, based on his uh, uh, book. So, two lessons was uh, on Wei Zixi. And Feng Song Wenji is the first master. Um, that we are going to talk about in uh, this uh, tradition. Also, uh, Mr. Yang Yuan Wei has mentioned him in his uh, Brooklyn, uh, not, uh, New York, New York urban landscape painting. He borrowed the, the idea of uh, his uh, uh, Huangshan, the Yellow Mountain, if you recall, um, and tried to see the, this kind of uh, vertical landscape. Um, yeah, something like like uh, like this, right? That's that would be helpful to paint the sky rocket, uh, uh, sky creepers in um, urban landscape, right? Uh, as you have seen here, there there's another. Uh, uh, kind of late style, late development in uh, Song Wenzhi's uh, art, uh, art, uh, artistic career uh, uh, life. I think in the early 80s, as I met him, uh, he already started this trend. Um, because uh, for the first time, I think he encountered uh, a print, a book by Zhang Daqian in a friend's, uh, in a friend's home, I think Huang, Huang Miaozi, maybe. Um, he, he was uh, so shocked and uh, started to do his own pouring ink. Um, but he called himself small or lesser pouring uh, color uh, um, than Zhang Da Qian's. But obviously, you can see Zhang Da Qian's influence there. But he has uh, more, um, it's more delicate, I think, and smaller, much smaller scale. Uh, usually paint on uh, small scale. Uh, in this kind of painting, he, he used a uh, long brush uh, methods that uh, we will explore later, okay? But first of all, we'll, we'll do um, his traditional. As you see, you know, in this example, uh, the background is brushless. Uh, it's like a monoprint. Um, and the foreground is uh, painted to just like uh, his regular uh, traditional landscape. Um, just like a Zhang Nai Qian, you know, when, when you get uh, uh, mature you know, in, in the, uh, you, you, you're more free, but uh, uh, in the beginning, he's very, um, very traditional. 
to, to start with. Um, okay, so if you cannot do this kind of rocks, the painting will look completely different, will be, um, will lose the connection with the, the, the uh, classic uh, that he, he um, he's good at. Okay. Um, then he, he used several kind of paper, mainly the uh, rice paper, but as you see here, he also used um, mulberry, mulberry paper. Um, you can see the texture is a little um, different, right? And this is uh, um, the uh, shrine paper. Uh, have, do you have a chance to review the 10 minutes demo? I think it's extremely helpful. I have, I have used that uh, many, many times in preparing the class. And uh, because it's in Chinese, the narrative, many of you cannot may, may, uh, may be interested in uh, translating that. So I'm going to, um, let me see, where's that uh, link? I think it's in the email. Uh, I'll go through the uh, 10 minutes. I think it works because you can directly learn from this, um, this, uh, this master. It's worth 10 books or, or 10 lessons from, uh, from, from others. Okay, so let me see if I can find that in my, I think it's a Wen Chi Hua Fa. I will put the keywords and I'll do a quick one. And if you could pour in that link in the chat, it will help. Uh, let me, I think it's in the email. So, here we are. Okay, I found it. Okay, I'm going to, um, uh, What's I, the date I, I, of the email, Henry? Okay, I, I found it. Let me share with you this. Um, so uh, to see how he did, he painted this, uh, this painting. Um, let me share, share screen. Oops. Share. Okay, here we go. Optimize. Hmm? Share some. Hmm? Okay, share some. Right. Okay. Uh, look at this first stroke. Very, very important. Uh, let me ask a question, and you can answer. Unmute by unmute yourself. Okay. What brush he is using? What's the size of the brush? Large. He's small using a small hair. brush, relatively <laughs> small brush. The brush I would use is like uh, the uh, red whisker landscape brush in the basic five, or the, uh, um, the Blue Hand Arts Moss Dots brush. He used a, a wolf hair uh, landscape brush. It's about one inch something like that, a, a slightly larger, uh, but not too big. You can see the, com the proportion uh, to his nails, fingernail, the, the size. And he, he paint uh, the rock uh, contour and the surface um, um, in one step. Uh, he, he will use dry brush to do some shading. So um, it's kind of, uh, one step for, you know, with all the, uh, if you, if you learn classic uh, Chinese painting in from uh, like a uh, mustard seed garden manual, uh, you will, you will outline it and do some uh, wrinkle sh uh, sh sh shading or shaping, but not exactly shading, I think. And then you add washes or, or uh, um, shading to, to the uh, texture joke, right? Uh, in different steps, but he 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 does it more like uh, in one step, um, and also um, with different uh, 
like, like uh, different tonalities, as uh, Professor Yang and we talked about, the, in different uh, uh, tones. This is uh, in the near ground, so it's a little darker than the, a little thicker. So the this mountain has um, area perspective or uh, perspective. It's, uh, it goes from uh, more detail and a uh, thicker contour to thinner and lighter. So you'll see. Uh, it goes up and down, yeah, pushing the brush to get the, the split effect. And look at uh, um, the co uh, con combination of large and the small strokes um, and the uh, light and the dark. So he leave a, a light um, area that separate the, the uh, uh, planes of the rock. And here the, uh, near the bottom, he got uh, the brush dry. So when you reload the brush, you load a little bit in the dry areas, not to destroy the rhythm that from you know, uh, wet to dry. And because here he would do some uh, houses so uh, the, the rock is uh, a little softer, I mean, uh, void, you might say. And he used a small, smaller, uh, stiff brush to draw the houses, and he will vary the strokes also. Um, so some uh, tip concealed, some side stroke, side brush stroke, but mostly the tip of the brush, right? Um, so that, that's the detail part uh, we can skip. So he will continue uh, to do the mountain foot. In uh, painting Huang Shan, that we don't see the foot. So the emphasis was on the peak, different from this gorge painting, um, to be real, you know, to realize, to be aware that uh, this is a river painting. So uh, he had the uh, defined mountain foot. Uh, in the case of uh, the, the cliff uh, in Pongshan, look at this. I think many of you missed how many brushes in his hand. So instead of uh, using a large brush, <coughs> he used two brushes in one hand. And this will create the split double line, as you see here. Um, Mr. Yang Yuan, we uh, also preferred a split brush, remember, to do the double line. So you can also, if you know uh, how to hold the brush like a chopsticks, you know, you can do, uh, you can use uh, this method. I have seen other masters like Dong Shouping uh, use the double brush in one hand to do uh, pine needles. I think we, we taught that in the class, right? Look at that. So sometimes you, you see only one line, sometimes it depends on the angle. So you can see double line. So that, that's, from the two brushes in one hand. And then he used side brush to soften, uh, to do the shaping or shading. And he changed brush uh, for details. And the, uh, when, he, when you do the details, it's very important. If you uh, do not have enough detail, the painting is not uh, complete. Um, and if you overdo it, uh, it will destroy the initial um, momentum of the, the, uh, um, the brush strokes. So um, this really depends on your artistic uh, judgment, uh, taste, um, how much detail you want to go after the initial uh, large brush. Um, sweeping work, like uh, not, uh, so always, as always, like a football shi as it does this, you, you start like a, um, whipping the, fl um, uh, mopping the flower, 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 right? And then you, you add detail as if you are sewing uh, in Broadway, you know, in, in um, like a very um, <coughs> careful to, um, add nuances. Um, and you can see how he does the cloud uh, with a small brush, you know, soft. This is, this is a soft brush, a sheep hair brush. It contains more wa water. <coughs> so the, the 
background uh, is added without outline, and the middle ground is combination of uh, those uh, uh, shapes and the lines. The background is done with a soft brush uh, with light ink. The ink will dry uh, lighter. Even you use water, you will see this kind of uh, gray. This depends on the experience. Yeah. Um, he, he would do the dots for vegetation. Uh, later, I'll explain. Now he's working on the distant mountains uh, to leave white between the mountains is very important. And sometimes the, the, the most uh, distant level has on the horizon, it's darker, you know, uh, in some condition of the day um, or weather. So he, he, he could use dark ink to, to it's basically uh, vary the shaping, I mean, the, the shade, uh, the tones and values uh, to distinguish, distinguish. You can see the watermark, right? Very clearly. This is the red star shine, I, I bet. And uh, make sure the distant uh, uh, horizon <laughs> Line is uh, the mountains on the horizon line is very small. Uh, most of the students tend to, to do the distant mountains too big. So this is the kind of like eye level we talked about when we paint the sky creeper. Okay, when you dot the trees, imagine they are on the ridge of a, a, a vein or something. So they um, they are along a imaginative a ridge on a van, a, a line. But uh, don't, uh, also you, you need to vary the uh, rhythm, I think the dance and sparse somehow. But this this is in between the, um, the line and the dots, the, the, the one he just did. And you can highlight to some uh, um, area with dark to end with. Uh, question from the interviewer or the, the viewer then was, uh, uh, why he didn't use, will he use color? He said, um, his answer was that uh, if the ink is enough, he will not use color. So in the beginning, he doesn't know if he used color or not for the, in this case. In some ca okay, case, he, he, he's planning to use color. But in, in many cases, he, he would do the monochrome ink painting to start with if he's satisfied. <coughs> This ink is considered as color uh, with different uh, tonalities. Um, and it's very rich already by itself. So you, you don't need the color if the ink is already uh, rich enough. Okay, he's working on the nearest uh, reef uh, rock. And then we'll see uh, the water. Since we're not going to do the water, so I'm going to just uh, skip the end part. You can um, watch yourself. Okay. Questions about uh, this video before I uh, stop sharing? No? Henry? Yes. This, Henry, this is Michael. Um, Michael. Those, uh, those horizontals that are almost in the middle, um, I, at first, I thought he was doing stairs, but is that supposed to be a part of the rock formation? I yeah, couldn't... it's a park. Uh, it's like a um, those uh, layered uh, texture. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a, it's not a um, human uh, traces. Uh, it's it's the um, this gorge is known as the Yangtze River Gorges. Uh, this area, I believe, has the fancy name called the uh, Bing Shu Bao Jian Xia, meaning um, military books or the you know the bamboo strip books with uh, big uh, military tech uh, strategy books or you know like the the Sun Zi Bing Fa, you know, we call Bing Shu, Bing Shu like military books. Okay, Bing Shu Bao Jian means uh, sword. So you, you're supposed to see some something like a stacked books there. You understand? It looked like a library, you know, with a 
um, bamboo books. And then, yeah. uh, Bao Jian is a, a Han sword, Bing Shu Bao Jian. That's a very descriptive name for the gorge, that, this part of the gorge. Good question. Yeah, he, he has his um, stylized uh, uh, rock formation, as you see in many other uh, paintings as well. He is more angular, maybe derived from the Southern Song style uh, uh, X cut. Yeah, okay. So this is, uh, uh, we're going to study the Huangshan, I think. But let, let me do a easier one. Okay, first. Uh, I'm going to do the one, the first one I put in the handout. Uh, if Mr. Yang was here, I was going to ask the authenticity of this painting because it's so different from other paintings that uh, uh, in my collection, in my e-collection. Um, that's why I, I would uh, like to do, because this one looks like someone is uh, uh, using his technique, but simplified. But, you know, the inscription always says uh, 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 that's with his signature and uh, uh, the, the people who receive it name on it as he usually do. So this could be a gift painting and he didn't have, uh, he did it in a rush or very, uh, you know, sometimes you, you go to a banquet or uh, visit someone's home and you, you do a quick, quick one to, to thank the host or something. So he did it in Beijing as a visitor. And uh, um, are you looking at this? Uh, let me see. Let me use a larger. So let, let's take a closer look. Yeah. So this this uh, this was uh, a gift painting to someone in Beijing when he visited uh, the city in maybe early eighties, something like that. Um, and okay, the, regardless of the authenticity, I I, I think it's a good uh, place to to study. Uh, you can do better if you you know if. If yeah, you think uh, there's some play, some weak uh, place, um, we can feel free to to change it, right? So I uh, I I think the composition is like a reversed C with a big void, you know, white cloth the, on the on the on the um, left side, and uh, uh, the emphasis is, is on the on the drag, dragon vein we talked about, the ridge of the cliff. So it's very... Um, First, soak the brush with was, was water, and then, then adjust the, the moisture. The so I don't hear echo. Water to mix Please. with a little bit of ink to get gray tones. Let's see. Who's the and microphone? Plant the extra moisture nice. according to the lead. Okay. We should be okay now. Um, you can unmute yourself if you have question. Okay. So um, I noticed the darks are um, the pattern of the dark. Um, Many is on the left, uh, on the right side, right? Um, classically, um, we we do this, yeah. Uh, so we we will we'll put the focus uh, on, you know, either on top, on the bottom. This one is uh, emphasized on. Usually he put uh, some um, pines, um, but the, yeah, very rarely when he paint Huangshan, he didn't do the pines at all. And that's that that helps us to just uh, focus on the rock, okay. Um, so he would start um, maybe in this case I I would uh, um, yeah it, 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 he he always uh, you know do the outline and the sh shading at the same time so let's 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 try this <laughs> I'm going to use a uh, I think he used this 
It's all British Sean. So let's let's try. I, I was going to use the mulberry, but to, I think it's more, it's different. I only I got the semi size. So this is a um, again. This is the very absorbent Sean. I I think it would be fun to see uh, from the uh, previous lesson. I I uh, treated it with the laund uh, laundry de detergents, very thin, uh, like five or three percent laundry detergent liquid. I soaked it and the. Uh, let it dry overnight, uh, 24 hours. It will become, uh, it will have the uh, rough um, edge more likely. I think it, it, it is suitable for doing this. So let me, let me do this. And, uh, put this on top of myself so you can See better the top. Okay, good. You can see the whole composition. You don't need a, a detailed uh, view because you not you cannot really copy the uh, the details. I'm going to use this uh, uh, larger brush because this this painting is um, it's very um, bold, unlike some other paintings I've seen. But you can also use. Uh, a uh, small brush, but you have to use the entire. Uh, just imagine you, you can you do the dark uh, in one stroke. The side, the side of the brush must be the same as that. That 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 those dots, you know, those uh, horizontal dots are. Uh, so this is probably you can you can use even bigger ones, but I think this is the smaller version of the Fubaoshi landscape brush. <clears throat> Okay, um, to um, to be safe, I will draw a con uh, a contour. Uh, don't over sketch this kind of uh, spontaneous painting because uh, it's very um, free. You want to keep that. Uh, so what I do, just like we do the the buildings, or or mark the apple G, and. Uh, the second um, peak, guest peak, the host peak. And uh, don't put it in the middle, okay? Don't put it in the, in the middle. Try to place it on the left side. I already changed, uh, put it to the middle. So this, just uh, there. So that's a, a camel, camel uh, back kind of uh, mountain. So there's a lower, Peak, uh, roughly there is on the on the uh, diagonal line, but this this one uh, connected with the background. If it forms the the the, the uh, camel peak, this two peak roughly is the same height, but this one is slightly higher because there's a, also a, a back mountain uh, com connected. There's a white line in between that helps to foil out the, the white also. So you, you, at this point, I'm not going to stretch. I just read it and imagine that the, the, the painting I'm going to do. And this line is a, is a cliff that separates the foreground from the back, middle ground from the background. I think this is the foreground. The foreground. The foreground on the corner is, is not in the middle, right? Avoid the middle. So it's on this side on the, uh, uh, and try to find the turning point, some uh, angular stop point. And even though it's very steep slope, you want to have some uh, stop points that you can have a rest. 
and sometimes kind of try to understand the structure here. Let me see. Okay, we can, after you lay out, um, you can zoom in a little bit, but uh, don't lose on the, get lost on the details yet. So try to just block in the, the major shape. And here's another note I want to make. Um, we have a saying in Chinese that uh, don't look at the, uh, you know, uh, how to say, Lu Bianji. So uh, don't look at the, <laughs> actually, we should, when we drive or when we walk, we should look at uh, the, the, the views on the side, right? But the, in painting, we try to concentrate on the main uh, trail, on the main trail, not, not sideways. Uh, so you, you see the voids on all the, all the, the side. So you, you don't want to put any hard, um, not hard element on the edge near the frame, right? Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's that's why this this painting is it looks uh, so focused, right? If you have the dark all the way to the edge, um, you won't have this uh, focus. It's a focal area, okay? That's uh, on the, on the ridge, and that has the dry and the dry ink more detail. Dry ink represents more um, hard, you know, detail. Okay. Um, so let's zoom in again. I try to identify the the. There is a little kind of a cliff, the small cliff. So the, the last mile or something that goes to the to tip. So there's there's some some kind of a small camel, you know, on the near the top, and the, this the ridge. That thing. We'll, we'll worry about that later. But uh, at this point, I just want to have the placement. You can use a. Uh, let me show you what I did last night on a, on a computer paper. I think um, in Western painting, like a, a watercolor landscape, we always do a a sand nail study, and then uh, we do a noten. A noten is a Japanese term for uh, black and white. Um, let me show you what's, you can do a very small one, like really tiny, you know, as big as a, smaller than a business card. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just color this. This uh, this for you. So in in this uh, uh, on this sheet, you know, you can you can paint uh, index of uh, your collection on single page. So if you have a book, you can do this um, study and put this in inside the book. So this will help you to memorize the the uh, content is without. Um, yeah, go, going, you know, to the actual painting. So this is basically a note hand, right? But yeah, we, we, we don't have to worry about the value at this point, but uh, if we, and we can use outline to, for the background. So something like that, you can simplify, um, simplify the design into a black white noting, and you know it with a pencil you can do something like uh, like this to uh, for grace. So 
but you don't need to have gray. So you can even color all that just the black and white. And that, that, that would be even more helpful. Okay, so that, that helps you to understand the composition. So this is for the layout, uh, the composition uh, to, to solve the problem of the, the uh, uh, and then you put, uh, the, you, you can also plan the, the seal and the um, inscription. If, if you want to you know, do a short one, you, you, you can just do something there. All right. Um, Should I turn this painting off and just do it without? <laughs> Maybe we just make it smaller so you don't have to stare at it. Okay. And you can uh, dust it off a little bit. If it's too dark, you can use a tissue. Uh, I have a duster actually, you could use uh, dust off with a uh, chop, chop. Charcoal, charcoal. Uh, it's, it's a soft wheel of charcoal. Uh, I'm supposed to get a shipment in uh, up with this because you know the delay with uh, the uh, uh, <coughs> the harbor here. Um, the good news is we we got the uh, we expected to get it today, so I put it online. If you don't have it, you can order later. Okay, so. Um, I think it's it's maybe okay to use two brushes, one like large for the um, the the uh, shape shaping or shading, and you can use smaller one if you want to do the um, to draw the, the lines. Uh, see if this is big enough. I try to uh, mimic his. Uh, you know his uh, style. He uses a small brush to do large painting. That's what I, you know, from my own observation. So um, you can start from a medium to be safe. So the top is not uh, it's not so dark. So I'm going to use uh, water to dilute it, just like uh, uh, we would do the, the uh, buildings uh, in, in the in the uh, urban landscape class. So <clears throat> I got a uh, a gray, and then I can add a little bit dark to the tip of the brush, and I'll start from. This, this main thing first, this main. Um, so I'll use the side of the brush, even I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to draw like uh, this, this Chen Song Yes style, this Song Wen Zhi also uh, always does, does something like this. And to start with, I, I just do, I, I want to lose up a little bit. So I just do this part, maybe. Just get a feel of the paper. You know, I do this, uh, this shape, it's, and you can you can go slow when the brush is uh, dry. I mean, yeah, it's, it's dry, and uh, you can then add a little bit dark. Be very uh, careful with the with the uh, load of the brush. Here, you want to draw the contour. And it's too dark. And uh, you, you can have an angular corner kind of, just like we do the buildings, we define the corners. That separate plans, yeah. And uh, and change the the shape a little bit. This is a triangular. This is a little flat, but not too, too flat. It's a, um, it's a rock, not a building, not like a square building, right? Um, and uh, there's a 
a, a rich line there and it goes um let me match it a little bit to show you in this area you may need a little attention then that you'll be free to um So this is usually the if it's you know if it's a, a local uh, a local should tell which which should, uh, what the name of this kind of peak. So you want to to, to be a little careful with uh, <coughs> with this kind of and the, notice the plan change that that goes um, so you're doing the the uh, uh, different. Uh, different uh, plans here and some kind of uh, so I, I'm losing track on the on the uh, tones but uh, I will if, if something wrong you know I can always darken it later but uh, it, it seems like uh, he he did uh, this so spontaneous almost like uh, the flower and birds painting style one stroke for, for with all the uh, elements. So when the brush is dark, you can start from the dark. And then when it's dry and what, the light, you can do the light. It all depends. So this this rock is dark. I'm going to just do something with a rhythm, you know, high and low. This and then okay. So you can vary the shape. This rock is pretty dark there. Okay. <clears throat> I tend to do the distant mountain too big when I enlarge it, especially. I want to zoom back. This is really common mistake. Uh, if I do to zoom out so I lose the proportion of that and there are some small rocks on top of this and so it is also you know, the difference indicates uh, different weight you know this this giant mountain is like an ampere the other are the subjects subordinate uh, so make sure who's the the Dominant. And don't try to finish in one step. You can always go back and add. So maybe you can use dry brush to um, kind of def um, do some like a preliminary sketch and when you're certain you go for the dark. And this paper, because it's treated, we look at, you know, it's very um, smearing. And you can, you can, Go down uh, and then push up if not enough. If you could do it in, in one hit, uh, it's the best. If not enough, you can always uh, add another, but uh, uh, maybe a little bit later after the first, it's uh, dry a little bit. And look at your own painting instead of uh, just copy the master stroke by stroke. Thirsty brush. Okay. And uh, here is a uh, little tricky. The, there are several faults here. Let me. Um, you can negative painting some uh, something first. 
and this is slope. Okay. And you can kind of push the brush down. The side brush is most often. This is too wet, so I'm going to wait. And uh, I'll do the, the foreground now. It's most dark here. Let's draw this uh, contour first. Uh, it's dry brush, so let me dry it. It's a little bit um, shaky, like, you know, it remind me of uh, Shi Lu, another master we, we're going to do uh, in next series. It's uh, from Chang'an, uh, the Xi'an school, or Chang'an school, An ancient capital Chang'an. I hesitate to do that. I've, I've, you know, I, I'm glad that I didn't use the large one because this paper really hard to control. It, it smells so much. And if it's too smooth, you can uh, break it. You know, like uh, add some um, dry brush to balance the uh, wet. So it looks like the uh, contour is always on the left side. Right? It doesn't really have to do with the, sh uh, the lighting for some reason. Uh, we consider yin yang contrast. Yin means uh, uh, like a dark. As long as you can indicate the pop, the pumps, and the you know the hollow. The, it has illusion of uh, the 3D. You can always add the grays later after the dark is set. I'm going to try add this line. You can use dots. Suggest that they want to make the the ridge very clear goes up. Oops. And here's a little dark that helped to define that. Yeah, he does it so naturally, so, you know, the, just the one, one step, everything comes up. It's too dark. You can blot it a little bit. You see that takes off. You can use a tissue. If it's too dark, you can blot it. Or you can use tissue to control the bleeding if you, you, know, you want to stop. If you see something good, uh, stop it. You can even iron or use a hair dryer. Very challenged, huh? This this kind of paper is really difficult to control. Okay, I'm gonna finish this. 
front part. Estimate how much ink I need. I try to do it in one uh, one note. Okay, that's a little kind of. Uh, uh, remember we talked about the camel peaks. Uh, so this side roughly should be smaller, and I add a little water to soften the edge to start with. I vary the, the the shape. I add a little water to the front of the brush to add this uh, light peak that's behind. Also soften that to make it a little. Yeah like like area perspective thing. and then the bottom should be a little softer and that's okay i got the dark on the background instead of the front that's okay it just go with the flow okay here's another rock that also define the shape of the clouds dry and the wet combined Okay, I'm going to add some dark later after define uh, the, that part. Yeah. We concentrate on the whole. Um, so when you do the dark, balance the dark, uh, and when you um, just plan the the rhythm, you know, the large, small, uh, and white, the big white and small white everywhere. Okay, here there. Oops, I think we got. I don't really see my work. How much could the could yeah. We cannot see. Okay, here we, we do the, the bottom cards just uh, also to squeeze out the shape. And there's upward movement, movement like a diagonal pointing up a little bit. So that goes, that leads your eye in that direction. Dry brush first, and then you can use water to to uh, soften. Dry and wet, uh, dry and light, and to uh, do this downy or feathery edges. And uh, I still have some, uh, I think the paper might got crinkles on, I'm not sure. He usually doesn't do that. I just, yeah, just the uh, dry brushing, split brush. You could really like, it's a, So add some uh, contrast, but uh, um, maybe it's a good idea to, to set it first. You can use a hair dryer.
actually when you do a uh, painting long slope like this it's best to stand up to do it it's better than sitting so please stand up and take a look um, from a standing position. Yeah, I think I see the difference because <laughs> the I can see the whole mountain when standing up. So that's a lesson to remember. You know, when you, when you paint uh, standing up, you can do a horse riding post like a Tai Chi. So my, my, I can lower my back without bending. You, you know what I mean? So I practice Tai Chi right now. I wish you can see my, uh, my, my lower <laughs> legs. So I'm, I'm doing a horse riding post. You know what I mean? Like riding a horse. And uh, you can, um, if you stand straight, you bend your knees. Make sure you bend your knees slightly. And uh, uh, you know, don't don't uh, bend your your waist. So you got uh, back pain if you if you do that. Um, okay, let me. Can I brush a little more? Just add a little detail. It could be steps like a micro, um, Michael mentioned, you know, some horizontal stroke. It could suggest some steps because uh, I would imagine there's a trail on the ridge. Uh, I remember uh, to climb that yellow mountain. Uh, And add, uh, like uh, Mr. Yang uh, taught us, when you add, you can add dry, dry on wet, dry on dry, or partially wet. Um, it's all depends. If you want a hard or a rough, um, you want to show the strokes, you do it uh, on dry. And if you want to soft, you do it uh, um, on wet, and if you want partially soft, partially wet, you can you can wet, wet this side, you know, and then uh, keep that that side. So it's all, and you can blot. So use all different ways, different wetness to add. It will enrich the effect. So dry, some, some de definition needs to be dry. So you want to and maybe not completely dry. A little bit dampening is okay. And uh, you can splatter a little uh, spring a little, a little with a little water. So some water drops, it's okay. Then you draw with a dry brush and, and partially wet, partially wet paper that create different uh, um, effect. Okay. A little, not a little ridge, little vein, little things. And the side, um, the yang and the yin against each other always uh, work. 
always important. Add some dark to the, to the it's too wet still. It's almost like a um, like a X cut, uh, but not so stylized. So almost and you, you can see the gradation. You don't want to break that. You want to keep dark um, and light. That's too dry. <clears throat> if you want to kind of blend in, you want to uh, you want to wet it a little bit. Yeah. So. Add water afterwards, also to soften that. Okay, let me. So the, the peak is in the clouds, not with darks. However, there are some dry details here I want to add. I want to make sure the the ink is lighter than the the main mountain here. Um, be very careful with the, some little things, some little white. If you want to keep or you want to eliminate, it's very important. Um, this part has a little bit definition there. Angular rock formation vertically and some little horizontal is okay. And, uh, So emphasis uh, is more detail on the top. Looks like, and then um, fog out. You know, mountain foot is hidden in the in the um, cloud. Out of the line, it's fine.
to homologize it with a little very light ink sometimes uh, just connect some shapes uh, eliminate the, the white you don't want very, very light it's more, almost like one uh, if it if you know from the scale of one to ten if this is a one should be in the foreground right and my ink is not dark enough maybe i should grind it the bottom ink sometimes not not dark enough and this this penny looks like you know like a, a one 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 take so it's not very much uh, like accumulated as a with other pennies, so we try to keep that. Even when you add, you want to make sure it look like a, a keep the original uh, stroke. Okay, here I can add now the the grays a little bit. Oh, here there's a um, going to be and this this white maybe too white <laughs> you want to eliminate a little bit just be careful you know make this kind of decisions. Sometimes I just use water to test the water, <laughs> to test the darkness. I mean, the, the, uh, if it works, uh, I confirm it with a dry brush to add value to it. Otherwise, it dries with, uh, into nothing. Because if you look at uh, this, is just the water, I just test uh, if test the shape. If it, I dark it like that, I have to add. Uh, oh, I got a, a hole there. I think I accidentally poke the hole with my fingers. But you can you can mount it uh, if you still have the pieces there. There's no problem with mounting. Okay. Um, so if we like to keep that, you can you can look against the light. Against the light, let me put some light there. Can you see the the actual value better? Yeah. If uh, you can always uh, go back, to, I mean, where to dry if to be safe to try to add. If you add now, it might smear, so you destroy the shape. So you want to, uh, yeah. You can wait until it. It's, uh, if it's not dark enough, you can uh, always go back to to, to add. And so let me see if I can add it from back a little bit. Yeah, you can also work on the back to and so you can see from the front. Okay, like that. Very careful at this uh, ending point. You, you start to see um, to to make judgment based on the whole whole painting, not just a, a single area. It should always do that actually to um, make a judgment based on the wholeness. And uh, since we have a concentration here. And uh, you can see a small dark there in the original that helped to dive, to to disperse a little bit. So I want to add a little dark as well. So value of contrast, very important. The, the edge 
here is uh, soft, the, the, not, not uh, hard near the frame. Okay. And this is a void. And you can go outside the frame. That mean that doesn't mean you cannot go outside. You cannot touch the frame. You do need to go outside. Don't be afraid to go outside. But with very light, with very soft, with you know dry ink, maybe just just like that. Nice light. Just water, maybe. You can add some water to dry brush to uh, make it soft. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if the uh, value or texture is not enough, we can always add. You uh, you can add line directly, like uh, you know, just I see some some white spots uh, pockets there, but I missed. So I just add some dark. That that function the same. Just some texture details. Uh, to enrich the, the painting if needed. But don't overdo it, like I said, it would, you would if you overdo it, it would destroy the, the uh, momentum that you, you created in the initial step. Too dark. So if it's too dark, I blot it first. If not enough, you can water it. Block it again. Okay. <clears throat> um. Some medium light. Because I added, added dark there, I, I want to reinstate some of the some of the dark here. So make sure this one is the still the host, and that's the diaper. Yeah, disperse of the ink concentration on on the top. So. Some dense and sparse. So the um, some areas is more um, dense, right? Some the contrast with the. Uh, so the, the shape of the white is also considered. There's no trace in this painting, but it doesn't uh, feel that, right? It, with the 
dry brush or some you still feel the vegetation and you don't focus on that and that's it i think i'm going to write a tribute to i mean homage to um song wen zhi da shi master song wen zhi or you can use the word fang mimic song wen zhi that we learned uh, from a calligraphy lesson this week on Tuesday. Because uh, mimic could be um, the style, not uh, just copy. Because this is one I'm not sure if it's the original uh, someone just because it's so different from his other works. There's more voice and uh, more um, direct approach. So this is monochrome, monochrome uh, without color. You, you can color it in addition to this if you like, uh, but uh, in his opinion, if the ink is uh, uh, already completed, uh, rich enough, you don't need color because the ink is already the, the best color, most uh, rich color you can imagine, all the, including all the colors. Right? Um, if you if you turn off the color on a TV, you can still uh, see the image in black and white. That's the idea. The, the black white is the fundamental colors of the world. So he, he leaves this area, uh, this large cloud. So I'm going to write uh, more on, on top, maybe to complete, the, to close that, uh, so force the viewers, uh, stop the view from uh, the to the left. When you write, uh, like the title is Huang Shan Yun Qi or something like that. Uh, rise, rising clouds in Huang Shan. He, he always write four character um, title like that. One, let me make sure you can see it. Can you see? Okay. I'm going to maybe ask Victoria to, to teach you how to write those characters. This is yellow. Yellow mountain, yellow mountain. You have learned in calligraphy. Yun, it's a uh, clouds. In traditional style, in simplify, you only write to the bottom, but uh, it comes from rain, rain. So this is the rain radical on top. Wang Shan Yun Qi. I'm going to write the cursive style. Rise, rising. Um, you can write the traditional characters. It has this site. You can you see them in ancient like a four ones. They will say Fang, uh, some soul masters. They use this. So this this site is a. Uh, uh, instead of just the fang, the square, you use the the whole word of fang, like a release, and with the the people radical on, on the left. So fang song. That's his last name. One. One means uh, cultural. That's his middle. Uh, his character given name. Zhi. So, uh, to to manage to govern. Anyway, that's his uh, Confucius uh, to to rule to rule by with uh, culture, right? That's the meaning of the Wenzhi. 
not by force. Okay, when should that's his name? And uh, I just uh, write the year. I think uh, it's normally we don't put the corner seal here. Maybe we can put on the other side. That uh, just omit that seal. There's seal on top. Maybe that's why you got uh, this diagonal balance. But if you just put a name seal, you don't have to put a, it. Will be too heavy, I think. On the top. Use a small seal. Uh, make it too small. Uh, on landscape painting, you want to use smaller seal as possible, same size as the characters. Do. So it will keep the proportion. Okay. Um, I got uh, another request from uh, Anne, the UK, um, or France. I, I don't know where you are, <laughs> Anne. Uh, you asked to do the uh, contemporary style. Uh, let me pull that painting out if we could find. So how, how is it um, going with you guys on this one? If you want to show, you can, you can unmute yourself and ask questions if you like. Question? It's mine. Can you? You see it? Okay, uh, ping, right? Yeah, can you see oh, it? I can see. Okay, let me let me let me spotlight. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so I like the tonality, the composition. Uh, gen yeah, it's uh, almost done, but uh, there's still some some missing details you can add to consolidate, especially the foreground part. Um, I, I feel mine has maybe also missed some structure, but uh, other than the contour on the left, there should be some inner things going, um, some lines, some, uh, even there, there are no, no um, line, the dots are, the dots should paint it along the, the contour, inner contour, a time, you know, or different plan. Um, so that suggests some some uh, uh, structure there. So it, it looks a little loose on the foreground. Other than that, it's good. The top also, um, the peak should be a little bit more like a bear, a, a, you know, like a, it's, it's more, um, Ma massive than the slopes down. I think maybe I, I wasn't standing to paint. I had the same problem. I realized I tried to maybe make it, make the peak a little more dominant. That's, that's the, uh, the rhythm. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the, you should have some like a sudden elevation from a, a plan to a, a platform to another. So some cliff look feel, not too smooth. You 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 can make uh, some uh, some changes in in the uh, in the angle of uh, the slope, 
So they are not just uh, one smooth change and uh, the distance between those uh, uh, small peaks could be uh, also varied a little. So the, there are some cliffs, I think, you need to, the more vertical, yeah. So it's not like a triangular shape. It should be more kind of vertical to make it to feel more majestic, I think. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Henry. You're welcome. Okay. Um, let me let me bring Barbara on. Hello, Barbara. Good. <clears throat> yeah, I I feel the majestic uh, feel of the peak definitely. Um, the the lines. The contour lines could be a little more um, defined. Maybe the the straight lines, you know, it, it it's uh, somehow blended in with uh, the the textures. So on the right side, it could be a little more to uh, fill in that uh, space. So it's fade out. Not to, uh, it, it's not like a both sides are across. There's still mountain on the on the left, lower left. Yeah, lower right. I'm sorry. Yeah, lower right. So it could be a little feeling, feel complete, a little bit, not to feel like uh, another void. Yeah, it should be soft out. Yeah, fog out on the side. But I yeah I I think yeah I just extend the 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 right side a little bit. It will be fine. The the cloud. I wish the middle, the wet, it will disappear a little bit. Yeah, this part is extra. <coughs> it should be should be left out. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me let me see who's the. Uh, uh, Spotlight and I will spotlight for everybody again. So, um, and looking at yours, I, I kind of see a mirror of my problems. Um, I try to, to reinstate some part, maybe to fix a little bit. Um, yeah, I want to make sure that. Dominant peak is uh, is there, and uh, maybe in the beginning we should you know do our sketch a little more detailed so you you have a better um, guideline. Next time you you can do a little more detailed plane when you do the charcoal next time, um, so that will give you more. But in the end. Uh, after maybe several copies, you want to take chances, you know, without uh, the sketch over over sketch. Anyway, in the beginning, it's a good idea to to plan the the you know the layout to all the formations of the rock shapes of the rock uh, with the charcoal. Okay. It's the turn to be still dark. It's kind of a um um <clears throat> A tendency, you know, we we tend to commit ourselves too early to some uh, details of whites, and try, you know, not um, afraid not, uh, not not to destroy that. So, it, so that's why we should always um, keep an eye on the whole, to so not be fooled by some good strokes in the beginning.
you know, the, the um, touch up could go on and on. It could spend uh, days or weeks, even um, you know, over years uh, on the painting. So, so you, you need to look at the painting uh, from distance and uh, it will tell you where you need to change by itself. So, try to make some it's hard to really um, define all the things but uh, also you need to kind of give enough to hold the painting together instead of uh, uh, too loose you know but some lines are Serve that purpose. Oops, I think I'm going to too dark. I think uh, I better stop. <clears throat> we take a picture. Actually, uh, you can use your phone to see the painting better, <laughs> to just like a mirror, you know, or a small uh, uh, kind of some thumbnail, uh, so you can see the problem at the chi, you know, the composition better in a small uh, image. Uh, that's the one way. Sometimes people use a mirror to see it, uh, same for the same reason. Okay. Because when you when you keep painting on details, you got uh, you have to see it from a fresh angle. To um, yeah. All right. <clears throat> now let's uh, let's see. We, we will do uh, exploration. Uh, like he after he saw Zhang Da Qian's holy ink idea, he starts to do this kind of painting, like a marble effect. Um, I, I saw him on Shikishi board, um, very small painting, not, not too big, like a medium size, a, a, a large Shikishi board maybe. Um, and uh, according to Mr. Yang, he said he would uh, ask his uh, mounting master to peer the painting off if the effect he likes, and then remount it uh, to uh, to paint continues to finish the details. So eventually the painting will be on, on a different material. But uh, it's good to have a like a hard support, like Chen Da Qian mount his painting on a drawing board to paint, as we saw in the uh, video, right in the, in the documentary. Uh, we, we, we studied. Um, so he, he does paint on board. Um, also, Mr. Yans uh, mentioned he, he, as he know, he would do uh, with a plastic, you know, he, he can put ink on plastic and the blood like monoprint. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, scenery of Huang Shan, uh, real Huang Shan. Okay, if you haven't been there, you can see the clouds. And the, the, we just uh, did. 
very beautiful place. And this is the painting I was asked to do. Okay, <sighs> a simple one. <laughs> Maybe you can do it. <laughs> Everybody can do that. Huh? Um, so I'm going to use my own approach to this uh, because the point seems to have uh, some hard lines. So the paper could be on, on, on board or on semi-sized or sized, even sized paper. So, I, but I'm, I'm not going to use sized paper uh, directly. I will use uh, plastic, plax, plexiglass. Okay. If you don't have a plastic glass, you can use a plastic bag. I'll try that. Let's, let's do that. Okay, you can use a plax, plastic bag. Maybe just um, we can do that not, just like that, right? And remember the the image will flip, so left to you know right will be reversed. So you need to. Keep that in mind. I got some uh, leftover uh, leftover color from my previous Zhang uh, Nanqian class. Remember, I used the gelatin to melt the powder, the, uh, and I just added some warm water to melt it. So that's basically the color he used, and he will get some grains. I think the grains maybe is from. Uh, overnight ink or some kind of, so I, I maybe I, I'll add a little bit uh, overnight ink. The, the, the convenient ink cake I considered overnight ink. And I'll just paint. Um, you see this, this billing effect. So it's the plastic glass does not take pens. I don't know what, uh, uh, he he will do with this, but um, you can use the plastic glass, a uh, plastic uh, as a, uh, I show you as as pressing. So I send it this. That's why you know it takes pens like that. Okay, and I I paint on this, and instead of just uh, uh, pouring, you can do that if you just put a lot of ink on that. You can use non brush. Uh, let me just put a concentration on top. Okay, so some, uh, some more ink. Some... The dark should be on this side. I try to mimic the conversation. So this is a, and the bottom is uh, just added. Right. So this is the, this is the, and whatever, so it, it would be. I hope there's some some kind of a uh, uh, chipping. So let me put all the pens on top, and I'll I will um, lean the glass and see if that creates some. Uh, And you can use uh, uh, like a straw to to blow it. Let's see, should do this upside down. See that creates the nice. Uh, Movement, right? It's too thin. That's the problem. I I was I used to do some um, add some uh, uh, very thin grit paste after mounting. I would you know use uh, that for this and that add some uh, some uh, body to the water. Yeah. Maybe I have to do another. Just the following this. I want to keep that top. I 
Well, I'll print. Yeah. I think I have something. Okay. I'm going to blow it again. I tried to do it brush free to begin with. Okay. Okay. I got it. I think. No. Let's use a uh, absorbent paper. You can use the uh, either uh, the shrine or the um, sometimes you you can you can blot with the uh, plastic glass. It will create some textures differently than the this. Yeah, I'm not trying to paint the whole thing, but sometimes you can. Interfere a little bit with your brush, but uh, don't let it dry before you blot it. Okay, can you can you see that? But it's a lot. It's not uh, the right orientation, but that's okay. I I will just uh, this is I believe it's the same size to show. It's a little absorbent. It was I think it's maybe not big enough. It's, that's all I got. I have to trim it if it's not enough. Okay. I just make a print, mono print. Okay. And at this point, you can still decide whether you want to leave a little blank or you want to, um, you know, you can have some bubble purposely there. So that's why you see some white, some white, and you can use the scrubber if you want to get. A clear, a, a, a close copy of uh, everything. Okay, now oh, that's a. Uh, now this is a semi size. So this doesn't uh, come to this side. I'm not sure it will. Take all the pens or not. So that's why. Okay. That's it. Sometimes the second print is uh, also good. That's this. All right. You can still use the remaining ink for another lot. I just want to show you this one first. And uh, it's pretty good, right? It's maybe not uh, uh, dark enough. You can, you can do a little wash. Maybe. I just want to organize a little bit. And uh, you can add a little saturation. I see some, some lighter blue there. I'm just tripping it. I can splatter a little bit. It's a little bit uh, too much. Right? I mean, this is why you use a uh, plastic glass to create some interesting things like this. Okay, <clears throat> just press with the plastic. This, this you've got you've got this little dots because the beads on, on the uh, proxy glass that creates this kind of texture. See the beads there? 
if you bring if you print it you got the dots a little 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 texture grannies grand grants grand grants uh, granulation we call it but that's deposit to us uh, particles but this one i will say it's uh, just from the about the beads from the park uh, the uh, Plastic glass and uh, wait, you, you need to let it just dry and then we will come back to add the, the pine trees and the rocks in the foreground. Uh, okay. Let's here. Um, this part has to be fixed before it's dry. So I need to just paint in the. I think we'll just do the cliff like that. Uh, just uh, try to do it to brush. Lastly, just use uh, some rolling, some kind of. Uh, like roller. And concentration disperse. This is a, this ridge is kind of, you can maybe just take that out. And uh, we can wash the very, very pale uh, distant mountain, the grays later. There's a little, oops, not so high. This is what we call the needle, needle mountain. Yeah, we're supposed to let the the water and the pens do most of the work for us before we even touch touch up the the brush. <laughs> let it dry. <clears throat> let me see if I can get another one. Here's the remaining, remaining pants we got still on the. You can just uh, uh, let me add a little bit. Uh, I see some purple color. Yeah, he used some kind of a uh, gouache, I think. Or oh, you can yeah, add a, a warm color just to make it gray. Oranges here. We we'll just add some uh, oranges, maybe. Just pull it there. I'll just re recharge a little bit of color, then we'll use the plax plastic wrap. Okay. 
press with a pla plastic wrap creates some more interesting texture. As I said, if you have uh, some uh, some glue in it, it may help to produce more texture. I use a very absorbent paper. I see a big painting, I mean, lines painting right there. But I'm not sure if it will, will feel there after I lift it. The beads on this. Yeah, you can use the uh, Paper towel or tissue to erase some unwanted parts. You know, just uh, create some uh, shape if you want. Okay. Let's see. That's an uh, unsized shot. It's more absorbent than that. Oh, I think. Usually, the second is better than the first, but not in this case. But, you know, you, you have to uh, adjust the plane sometimes if it's uh, uh, looking good sideways, you don't want to force it to. to there's a lot of dots there. So that, that's the way you got the granation kind of effect. That lot of dots at, you know, for trees or something. And that's a good uh, uh, texture, right? And you can let it dry if you like it. And then you, you do the regular painting on that. Okay. So let me put this aside. We will we'll work on this one. I try it and I will continue finish this if we have time. Oh, we don't have much time left, only five minutes. That's good enough for this kind of painting. Let me iron it. Iron it to be faster. Um, I want to keep the the pens from. Uh, I use a non-absorbent paper to iron it. If some parts you you still want to you know keep it in touch in touch, you you can wait it. You can just wait. You just want to dry those parts already ready. I want to pen on this. Uh, Foreground. Okay. Just dry the whole thing. It looks fine. Okay. Dry. And uh, just add some trees. That's all. So he, his trees is very. Uh, some rock first. And the rock is far. It's not very clear, uh, very close. I, mean, I already got some some kind of shape. I uh, just to follow this shape. Just a little suggestion. There are two rock kind of uh, grouped together and with a little opening in there. I try to match the, the texture of the, the natural uh, blotting. So you don't need to, it's too stiff. Blot it. 
try not to complete everything. There's some nice white negative shape, almost like a snow, snow uh, scenery. Maybe we just consider that a snow landscape. So you know, you can maybe just take advantage of the the shape already there. Okay, um, I, I'm going to omit that tree that comes from nowhere. If you like, you can add that. It's like a, a photograph view that where you stand. This is the near ground on this side. Right? Okay, let's finish the middle ground first. So get an idea of what I have in mind. And because this could be a snow scenery, so we leave a lot of white in the trees also. Just paint, paint the, the back of the foliage, maybe just leave some white there. And uh, there's Overlapping a little bit. This is in the front that overlaps the, the back. First snow in Huangshan. <laughs> That's my title already. Got one minute left. Just a little bit there. And this kind of tree leads your eye, so you're going to point it to this for the, for the front. And just dry brush. Okay, um, it does have a reason to, to close that edge, kind of tiny branch there. Let me do that. Um, it has a warm kind of a, um, stain there. So let's just add a little bit of that. So I just mix all the red and the orange get the warm. You can add a little dark. So that's where the branch coming from and the kind of uh, like an arm welcoming a guest. Stretching out. It's called the welcome guest tree in Huangshan. And the, the, the back. Okay. And, uh, you use a uh, basically dark uh, blue. Add what? Uh, add some ink. Again, this is a uh, snow thing, so it leaves a lot of white in between the needles, maybe. Light in the background. Yeah, he, his style is he, he does the, the needles very um, traditionally. So you draw with the tip of the brush. I don't have time to do that. I just use dry brush instead. And he sometimes do the dry brush first, you know, to do the, the whole um, shape of the 
trunk the crown and then add add some uh, uh, details with a small brush The point is the whole uh, the group of the, the crown is more important than individual needles. Anyway. This kind of negative holes in between the, the branches is very important. Okay, we don't have time to finish, but the, you got the idea of uh, how this uh, this kind of thing is done by itself, right? Uh, uh, not much uh, you need to paint. You just add a little warm to the trunk, and that will be it. Just to find a place to sign. He did the signature very tiny on the corner. You don't have to copy that. Uh, I'm thinking to do this side. So I'll just add a little more warm to the, to the rock. That creates some kind of contrast. Okay. Sign. You can say Huangshan Chu Xue, meaning uh, first snow in Huangshan. They do got beautiful snows in the winter. So, let's see. That's good. <clears throat> Two means the uh, initial first. So no. Okay. And uh, box. Okay. Mimic. One two. Just use his uh, given name. Everybody knows. And I just write my first name, Shao Hui. Red. That adds a little warm spot in the cold winter scene, in addition to the bronze. So um, that's a quick demo of this uh, uh, brushless uh, approach to make a texture first and with monoprint and then add on some details inspired by Zhang Da Chen's pouring ink. But he called um, this uh, lesser, lesser style. And uh, I do see some very pale distant mountains. It's a little warm kind of, uh, 
great. So let's do that. Uh, you can leave if you have to. Uh, I will send you the recording. So. And by the way, um, please sign up for the next four classes. We'll continue to study. Zhu uh, Qizhan is the first one in my mind because he is the mentor of uh, uh, this artist, the Song Wen Zhi. Uh, he, is, uh, he lived uh, 106 or something like that. Uh, he visited the US after his uh, 100th birthday, I think. I saw some video uh, on YouTube before, but I'm not sure if I could find them, but uh, I'll try. Yellow mountain. I just add some yellow colors to the back. And make sure that this peak are kind of small. Uh, it has some up and down. Space. They could be a little white uh, clouds, as he always leaf there should be some there actually anyway i missed um uh, between two layers and the two grounds like uh, the foreground the middle ground and the uh, distance add a little bit ochre or some kind of warm to the snow Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> so how many of you are continuing? I already got six, uh, maybe more now, but uh, anyway, I thank you for continued support and uh, I'll see you next week, okay? And we'll, we'll skip Thanksgiving. And then we'll continue uh, uh, three weeks after that, and we'll um, finish the whole series by before Christmas. Went, uh, Ten days, I think. It's uh, on the six things so will be the last class. I hope you can make it. And uh, if not, uh, I hope you have a happy holiday season. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's all for today. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thank Henry. You. Thank you.